So these are just some of the pictures that I've shot with my iPhone over the years, and they always get a lot of likes on Instagram and Twitter. And the most common question I get is how I set up my iPhone to take these pictures. I'm always trying to figure out what are the best settings to get the highest quality pictures, to get the best photos out of the iPhone. The settings do change year to year as Apple add new updates to iOS and as new iPhones come out. But right now I wanted to share what I think are the perfect settings to get the best photos with your iPhone. Before we get into it, I'm using the iPhone 14 Pro, so I'll be showing the settings on this, but most of the options should be similar across all iPhones. There may just be a couple of features here and there that maybe older iPhones don't have. So the first thing we're going to do before we start taking any pictures, of course, is setting up our iPhone. So we're going to go to settings, we're going to go to camera, and we're going to go through some of the settings here, some of the things that I enable to get the best quality pictures. So we're going to go into formats. I usually have it as high efficiency, but the key feature here, the most important feature actually, I think out of anything else is the Pro Raw option. So I always have the Pro Raw option enabled. And because the iPhone 14 Pro now supports 48 megapixel pictures, I have the resolution set to 48 megapixels as well. Now, this is only supported on the 12 Pro, 13 Pro and the 14 Pro. So you will need to stick to JPEGs, but if you do have the option for Pro Raw, I would highly recommend enabling it. And the reason why I enable Pro Raw and why you should use it too, I have it listed here. There's a lot more data to work with. So it gives you a lot more flexibility when editing the exposure, the color and the white balance of your photo. And it's just not something you can do with JPEGs. There are a couple of downsides when shooting with Pro Raw. The picture sizes will be much, much bigger. Some of my pictures are over 100 megabytes a picture per picture, which is just crazy, but that's what it's gonna be like when shooting 48 megapixel images. So I usually use some sort of backup option. I do use Apple's iCloud service to back up all my pictures. And yeah, it, it works completely fine, it works great. The other downside is that shooting in Pro Raw is slower. So when you take a picture for it to sort of process and everything, it can be slower than shooting JPEGs. For video capture, I do have Apple ProRes enabled, but I don't actually use this that much. I just like to have the option there and I can enable it or disable it in the camera app itself. I have record video set at 4K at 30 frames per second. You can choose 24 frames per second or 30 frames per second. 24 frames per second, people like to say looks more cinematic. But the reason I'm shooting 30 frames per second, or I have it set at 30 frames per second, is because I think it looks better on places like Instagram, TikTok, and other sort of services. I have enhanced stabilization also enabled, and then I have everything else basically disabled, especially HDR video. HDR video, I would highly recommend disabling that. I don't think HDR video really looks that good, and it sometimes just makes the footage look very artificial. So I would disable that. Uh, record slow-mo and record cinematic, I haven't really adjusted any of those. I sort of just left them, left them as they are. Preserve settings is a big one, and this will make your life a lot easier. So I do have preserve settings enabled for camera mode. So when I open the camera app, it goes back to where I left it. So if I've left it in photo, if I've left it in video, it'll go back to whichever one I left it in. The other ones I have unticked. Uh, portrait zoom is ticked, Apple Pro Raw is ticked. So yeah, those are my preserve settings. If we go down, I have grid enabled. I have view outside of the frame disabled. This is usually enabled by default. And if we go back to the grid, the reason why I have the grid is so that it helps me compose my shots. So when I show you the camera app in a second, you'll see the grid. It'll help you compose your shots a lot better trying to figure out where things are in the frame. There's also photographic stars. I don't usually mess around with that. Prioritize faster shooting is enabled. Lens correction is enabled. Macro control is enabled. And that's pretty much it. I always use the default camera app. I don't really use any other camera app. The default camera app for me personally does everything that I need it to do. Now we're going to go into the camera app itself and show you how I have that set up. We can see we have the grid lines that I mentioned earlier. This will help me compose my shots. We can see we have the raw option enabled at the top and we can quickly enable or disable this. So maybe I do want to take a picture very quickly and I don't want to wait for the pro raw processing. So I can just enable and disable that whenever I need to. I have also the live photo disabled. Live photo is nice to have, and I can see why people use it, but if you enable live photo, you can't then shoot in Pro Raw. So it's one of those things where I just have it turned off anyway, because I want to always shoot in Pro Raw. I also have the flash on auto usually, and then I have the night mode enabled as well. The night mode is very useful when shooting at night. If there isn't enough light, it will just ask you to stand still, maybe for one second or a couple of seconds so that it can get gather in more light into the sensor and take more information for the image. And that's how you get those really nice night shots. So one thing I think a lot of people don't realize with the iPhone camera app is that you can swipe up and you'll reveal a few more options for when shooting pictures. 
So again, we have the flash, it's on auto. We have the night mode on auto as well. We have the live photo off right now, that's fine. We can also change the aspect ratio. So if you're someone who likes to shoot square pictures or 16 by nine, you can change it here. But I usually leave it at four by three. You can also change things like exposure manually, but all of this is usually just set to auto. I don't usually like to mess around with it because I don't wanna to have to mess around with this stuff every time I'm taking a picture. I just want it to be ready to go. We do have a filter section as well, which is very useful. So there's some built-in filters like vivid, vivid, warm, vivid, cool, dramatic, and you can apply, well, you can try these filters as you're shooting the picture, you don't have to apply them after the picture. You can, of course, apply them after the picture as well. But yeah, Apple has some built-in filters if you wanna experiment with them. They're things I don't really use that much. The only time I use the built-in filters is when I'm shooting videos, because sometimes using one of those can look quite nice. And finally, we have the Pro Raw option as well. So yeah, I have Raw enabled. We can swipe back down to get rid of those. And then of course, we have the different photo modes that we have here, time-lapse, slow-mo, cinematic, video, photo, portrait, and pano. Photo is usually what I stick to, uh, photo and video. I don't usually mess around with any of the other options on here. Portrait is something I usually avoid. Portrait pictures, some people like them, but I personally don't like them. I just think they look a bit too artificial when it comes to the sort of separation of the subject and the background. I don't think it's as good as a proper DSLR camera, so I usually avoid the portrait option. One great thing about the iPhone 14 Pro specifically is because it has a larger sensor, when you take a picture of a product, you can get quite natural blurry background anyway without portrait mode. I put an example on screen so you can see what it's like. So don't feel like you have to always use portrait to get a nice blurry background. You can sometimes do it with just a standard photo mode. Of course, there are three different cameras on the iPhone 14 Pro. You have the ultra wide, which goes to 0.5. You have the standard one times, then you have the two times. The two times on the 14 Pro is actually just a zoomed in version of the one times. And then you have the three times as well. The one times is usually the one I stick to most. And sometimes I use the two times as well but the one times is usually the one I stick to. And the reason for that is you get the full sensor, you get the full 48 megapixel image. It's not cropped or anything, the full 48 megapixels, because you can just crop it later on if you do want to zoom into the image. And that is it, that is the camera settings itself. These are all the camera options that I use to take pictures. It really isn't that complicated. I think the main option is just having Pro Raw and using that to take high quality pictures. And everything else I leave in auto. I don't really wanna to have to mess around constantly with exposure and adjustments and colors and all these other stuff. I just want to be able to get out my phone, go into the camera app and start taking a picture without having to mess around with anything. Now let's move on to the editing process and I'll show you how I edit my pictures. My editing app of choice is Lightroom. And the reason why I use Lightroom is because it syncs my photos across my laptop and my phone and it keeps just a backup of my photos. I also found that Lightroom is just quite easy to use when it comes to editing photos. I think the interface is easy to use and I have my presets. I'll leave a link to my presets if you're interested. It, they're not required, of course, but the presets just help me get a sort of specific look on my images that just make it easy to apply. I don't have to go into all the sort of color adjustments and stuff. I can just copy and paste or just apply a preset and it's ready to go. So here we are in Lightroom. I've imported an image that I shot in London of just a random building. And yeah, it doesn't look really all that interesting, but I've composed this shot so that it's sort of the corner of the building with some room above it, the sky and the building itself. And I've sort of uh, made sure the street isn't in it. And I think it looks pretty nice, but like I said, I think we can make it better. So if I go to my presets, uh, we can apply one of my presets here. Let's see what we have. Uh, I quite like that one actually. I think it gives it a nice moody look. You can see the before and after like so. And then I'm going to make some lighting adjustments. So in here we can go in, I might actually bring the exposure up a little bit like so. Maybe bring the contrast down, bring the highlights down, bring the shadows up like so. And I think that's looking pretty good as it is, you know, I, th I think that looks pretty nice. But what I'm going to do is, which a lot of people I don't think do it enough, is that I'm going to change the geometry of the image. So right now you can see the sort of, uh, side, these lines here, they're not actually straight. They're sort of going upwards because obviously I've shot the, the photo pointing my, my camera, my phone upwards. But in Lightroom, we can adjust that. We can go to geometry here and we can go to vertical distortion and we can bring it down like so and we can make it straight. And then we're going to tick constrained crop so that it crops into the image and we can see how much different that looks, how much better that looks. If we look at the before, that's what it looked like before. That's what it looks like after. Big difference 
just a simple little preset that I've applied, some lighting adjustments and then uh, geometry adjustments, and it looks a million times better. So here is an image that I shot of a really nice classic Porsche in London. Yeah, I saw this car and I just had to take a picture of it. It just looked awesome, especially with Canary Wharf in the background, all the city lights and stuff. I just thought it looked awesome. So this is, again, just shot at default in the camera app. And obviously because it's dark, it automatically goes into night mode. So I think it exposed this picture for around one second or two seconds and it looks really nice, but we're going to make it look even better. So we're going to go to the presets that I have. We're going to see what I have in here. So I quite like this preset 0307. We're going to apply it and then we're going to make some adjustments. So bring up the exposure like so, bring down the highlights like so. Just simple stuff, nothing too crazy. Bring up the shadows maybe a little bit as well. Uh, bring up the blacks a little bit. And we might actually bring, no, we'll bring down the exposure down. And the reason why we're gonna bring it down is because I like to do this little trick where I like to put a halo effect almost on the subject in the image. And the way I'm going to do this is that I'm going to look for the masking option here and I'm going to apply a mask. So we're just going to choose radial gradient here and we're going to do this like so and cover the car like so. And then what that enables us to do is we can adjust the exposure, the color, just for the masked bit of the image. So we can go to light like so, and we can bring up the exposure so you can bring up the brightness of the car. We could make some geometry adjustments as well for this image. So constrain crop, of course, and then we'll go to vertical like so. And I think that looks pretty good. We can see the before, like so, and that is the after. Big difference, makes it look a lot more, a lot more sort of professional looking, makes it look like it was shot with a DSLR, I would say. And we still preserve a lot of the details because it was shot in Pro Raw at 48 megapixels. So you can see as I zoom in, how much detail there is in this image. I think it looks incredible. So yeah, that is it. That is the editing process. That is how I edit my pictures on my iPhone. I can do it all on here. I don't have to do it anywhere else. I can just take the pictures, bring them into Lightroom, edit them all on here, and they're ready to go. So that is it for this video. Hopefully you learned a thing or two. Hopefully you can now start taking even better quality images with your iPhone. Before I go, this is actually something I've stolen from Sam Parr, who then stole it from someone else. I have a gentleman's agreement. It sounds ridiculous, but the agreement is that I provide this content for free. You guys get to watch it for free. All I ask in return is that you subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave a comment if you can as well. And of course, follow me on other places like Instagram and Twitter. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully you're inspired now to take some better pictures and maybe send them my way. Send them my way on Twitter. I'd love to see what you guys come up with.